Thank you for tuning into a brand new series. It will be a very regular uh, series uh, called A Ghost Hunter Watches. Connor and I are both ghost hunters. We're paranormal investigators. Uh, you guys in YouTube land might know us most because we took the Janoskians out to see Linda Vista Hospital. I took Andrea and Jan out to the Cod Estate. But thank you, Awesomeness TV, for the opportunity to do a couple of really cool right. investigations. They were so cool, and I got some really cool stuff from both of them. Yeah, and again, that was maybe the last really public official investigation ever at Linda Vista Hospital. We will watch some of the greatest, and maybe not so great, uh, paranormal, supernatural, very supernatural, yeah. <laughs> uh, TV shows, movies out there, and give our unique perspective as people that actually work in the field. So today we will kick off our very first episode with a movie called The Woman in Black 2, The Angel of Death. By the way, right now on Netflix, uh, you can watch this on Netflix, it has only got a rating of one and a half stars, which is really... Not it deserves better than that. I really feel like it gets the one and a half star rating because the first one was incredible. I also wonder how many people are tuning in hoping for paranormal activity. That's true. And it is a slower burn, yes. slower it's, build it's up suspense. It's much more British style horror film and it like, takes its time and has these slow, not even scare moments. There are cheap scares. There, there's a few cheap Especially scares. Especially early on, and I always have to deduct points for that. I always think movies with children in them are more terrifying than any other kind of horror movie. Especially British children with those cute little accents, automatically more terrifying. I, I'm sure we should drop our advertiser in at the end at a more opportune time, but it is so, it lines up so hard with making a Doctor Who reference to the little boy in the gas mask asking, are you my mummy? Uh, yeah, seriously. Are you the ninth doctor? <laughs> uh, our clothing today is brought to you by Geeky U, a really awesome nerd apparel, homemade, crafted, yeah. handcrafted apparel company. Handcrafted, everything's hand done by this totally amazing nerd family out of Downey, California. They've got a great website and they even just opened up a shop in Burbank. Check them out. Um, GeekyU.com. If you talk about really any movie, you have to start with the setting that it's in. And this one does take place during World War II. And I found it interesting right off the bat because, again, from a paranormal standpoint, people that are near death, uh, whether it be people dealing with some really rough illnesses or... Just in peril. <laughs> people in peril, people having near-death experiences, there is a much higher frequency of people making contact with somebody from the other side. Really, you have an entire major city that is near death. You gotta wonder if at that time there was a real big heightened sense. There is, there's a lot of, um, in the time that I spent in London, they have so many ghost stories that just like, and this ghost at first appeared during World War II, and when, like people were spending time underground, suddenly they started seeing all these different ghosts and stuff that no weren't necessarily related to World War II. Anybody out there Let is us know. listening or watching in London and, and you've heard stories about maybe some paranormal foreshadowing of a bombing or I don't know, just any kind of heightened activity, heightened paranormal activity during the bombing raids. I mean, it would line up, it would be likely. But I, actually, I myself have never looked into it, so I'm not sure. So the movie starts, you see like the end of a bombing and then it switches to the train station. All the kids are being packed on the train station and I immediately can't help but think of Sorry, that's who I am. Um, I, I've heard of that. I, that's who I am. I don't know. <laughs> so that's how they started. Like all of these kids being packed and shipped out off to the countryside where they'll be safer, where they're not going to be hurt. Um, and we're introduced to our main characters here at the station. Um, we see Eve, just the mother character. She's taking care of all of these little kids that are being taken up um, into this countryside, this forgotten little village of emptiness and this terrifying house. And we're also introduced to the little boy whose parents have died. He'll and he is shell-shocked, to use part lanes of the time. Yeah, he can't speak. He's so traumatized by this event that he can't. He just draws pictures and writes. Again, creepy kids and ghost stories. Let's make them more affected as well. Therefore, he's obviously going to be our conduit to the other side. Uh, contrary, there are the adorable, creepy British children, and there are the obnoxious, asshole British children. 
Yes. Um, we, we meet one of those. Just like a slasher film, you know they're going to have some comeuppance. Yes, absolutely. You immediately are like, and that one's going to get it, and that one's going to mm -hmm. get it, and that one's going to get it. <laughs> and again, the setting is really awesome, uh, because once they get out of the city, they get to a country house in the moors, mm -hmm. and uh, an area where at high tide they're on an island. I also thought it was cool because in seeing the first, which is you don't have to see the first one to understand this one. But it did, it did help a little, because you see, like, it's the same village, it's the same house, and the first one's set in the Edwardian era, where everybody still lives in this village, and it's still, like, happy and everything, but by the time <clears throat> World War II is rolled around, it's just empty. Arya thought it was really interesting that they had, like, air raid warnings, even on Sparrow out there, like, the blackout rules still apply. Bombers were passing overhead, they're out in the middle of the country. And so they had to maintain a blackout, rush into the basement if they do see bombers coming overhead. The totally creepy basement that still has all the ladies' shit in it. Yeah, yes, and that was of course a scary scene. At this point, this is a bit later on in the movie, and the stakes are already raised. We already see that Eve, which can you be lazier with naming a character? Yeah, really, <laughs> seriously. Uh, but. Yeah, she's already convinced that there are other entities there. At first, thinks they're people, and which is a cool. I thought that thing. was so cool. The idea, like, for a good portion of the movie, you really think. I mean, we as the audience, we, as we the know. audience, no, but they, as I don't know, maybe they, you wouldn't know if you hadn't seen the first one that it was. Paranormal. You know, you're watching it. You know, you're watching Ghost. You're, you know, you're watching a movie. It's not yeah. going to be as simple as oh, there's just a hobo out there. Yeah. The first victim is a jackass bully kid who gets lured out into the moors and he's found like drowned in mud. It is just like the documentary that I worked on recently called The Hidden Truth, uh, which is about this series of unsolved deaths in La Crosse, Wisconsin, where, you know, on average about one person per year for more than a decade has been found uh, drowned in the same area. They all fit the same uh, physical description. Um, and it really, the really interesting thing is having worked on this movie, I, I, I directed it and was along for this several year journey of trying to discover what's going on in this town. And and then we kind of see it play out in Woman yeah. Black too. I also thought it was interesting, not all of the kids are drowned. Yeah, Which yeah. I thought would end up being more important because having watched the first movie, we know that that's what happened to her son. In the first movie, it seems so important that these kids were being drowned over and over and over again, right? Or her son had died. And so I thought it was interesting. It was more like she was in, in killing off the bullies that are bothering this kid. She's, yeah. try, she's making this kid trust her, which I thought was an interesting thing for her. Yeah. It was like demonic activity almost, where like you hear people like, well, it's turned off as friendly. It, it's, it's cliche, but it's cliche because it's a reality in, in haunted sites. To have a, your main character talk about something being cold, that the room got cold, yeah. that kind of a thing. But they did it a little bit better and they took it a bit further where when they first arrive at this house on the moors, they go into this room that was locked. However, when they got there, suddenly the door is unlocked and, and wide open and it's a nursery room. Uh, Eve and uh, the bus driver. He is the actor that played Daniel Radcliffe's character in the original Woman in Black. So that was cool when they bring that somebody back so to cool. the old. But so she not only says this room is really cold, uh, and then of course he tries to say, well, it's very drafty, it's an old house. Uh, she said, no, it feels sad. And so that was awesome to have uh, an emotional with psychological imprint. An emotion is being impressed upon her, forced upon her, and that is something that happens at paranormal locations. Bomber pilot, most useless character in the entire world until the very end. Then he becomes the hero and he was really hot the whole time, so it doesn't matter. Um, was he hot the whole time? I thought he was I hot. I mean, when I got turned on by him, it was <laughs> um, the whole time. <laughs> the whole time. The answer is the whole time. Um, I, his character ends up being very cool because he's also shell-shocked um, and he's the most receptive to Eve when she initially says like something's wrong with this house. He says, okay, let's figure out what it is. Mm -hmm. and I thought that was really an interesting character for him to play and it ends up that he's been uh, so shell-shocked shell that he... By the sh seashore. By the seashore. <laughs> he can't even fly a plane anymore, so he's been put into like 
like they set up a fake airfield for him to go and take care of and sit at and be a target. And this was a real thing that they did during World War II. Both sides used this like weird trick. They were massive, some of them. They were huge. And they had everything. They had like the fake little planes and they had like fake housing and they even had like fake little chimneys that made like little smoke. I thought that was so cool. What they should have done, this maybe is another gift <laughs> to what we're doing uh, as paranormal investigators looking at ghost story movies. Let us help you write, guys. They, they really should have had only Eve, who was psychologically trauma, like mm -hmm. messed up from losing a child uh, immediately after childbirth. And this guy suffering with PTSD, he's like, they're both afflicted emotionally, which should have, you know, in the world of the movie, made them more open to experiencing something. And that would have been an a good through line, a good constant of why these two people are experiencing things, but like the very cold headmistress type yeah, lady she experience didn't experience anything. anything. Though I did love it when she finally does see the woman in black. I yeah. thought that was so cool and she like kind of loses her marbles but then in, in the end when the little mute boy goes missing uh, then she and Eve is so convinced that this boy is still alive. That the, the yeah. matron was like, go, go, go find yeah, go them. Do it. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. Yeah, it was a very big shift in character yeah. after a very traumatic moment. So that's our take on Woman in Black 2. The Angel of Death. I also love that it's a hammer horror film. Because like yeah. I grew up watching like the really terrible hammer horror films as a kid with my dad. And so to like it's... be able to watch these new ones that are actually pretty good. Yeah, it's neat. They're, they're not schlocky yeah. or exploitive. It's it's kind of the opposite of a lot of horror movies now. This uh, series will continue on, but it will take a very TV-like turn. Uh, I will be covering note for note, episode for episode, every episode of X-Files in order. So if you want to get your Netflix ready and watch along with me, I'll post a couple a week. It's a good thing to prep before the new series comes out. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. I mean, it's one of the greatest shows of all time has come back, which is amazing. And honestly, I love X-Files. It's one of the greatest shows that I've ever watched. And I'm a freaking poser when it comes down to it because I think I've seen maybe half of them. Connor. I will be talking about the supernatural aspects of Supernatural. It's a really interesting show. I'm really excited to be like going episode by episode and talking about all the different little weird things. Um, much like The X-Files, which some of the writers carried over to Supernatural. Um, it's very, it has like all these little tiny little things in it that add up to a big picture. And I thought that was cool. I will say, you know, X-Files is way more grown up Way more, my more dramatic and subdued. It's true. Um, so but right. Supernatural does a, the writers obviously really looked into a lot of amazing good stories for, that they repurposed. Yeah, for both shows. Yeah, really, absolutely. Yeah. Again, the channel for that is a Ghost Hunter Watches. And if you have comments, obviously leave the comments, but you could also reach us at a Ghost Hunter Watches at gmail.com if you have a movie or show that you want us to take a look at and, and give our take on. For yeah. a certain age range, you'll be watching me on The X-Files. And, and for, for a the other age, age range, range, you'll be watching me! For the people whose back isn't hurting as much. Thank you, Geeky U, for providing us with our awesome wardrobe. I love any excuse to pull off pigtails with an outfit. Yes, <laughs> as do I. Um, uh -oh. If you are looking for a hoodie to wear in Los Angeles in the middle of the summer, Geeky You can really hook you up and make you sweat your ass off in and your own house. And if you are house. looking for an adorable Harley Quinn themed top. Next time we switch tops. <laughs> yes. We are What's Your Ghost Story on Instagram, on Twitter. On you can screen. also follow our own independent Instagrams and Twitters. I am Paranormal Pixie. And I'm old guy sweating in a Doctor Who shirt. <laughs> he's Scott Marcus. Because <laughs> he's boring. Yeah! <laughs>